Hello everyone, my name is Pillar. I am one of the CAs for Bristol Open 2024, and I'm going to give you the judge briefing. What we're going to, to discuss is the average intelligent voter, which is how you're going to judge arguments, then holistic adjudication, how you're going to then deal with specific comparisons, how to deal with rule violation, and how to do well in both deliberation and the away. So at the moment you're going to be judging, you are the average intelligent voter which means that you have no specific knowledge and you do not come from a specific country. So you might be a politics degree. And you know a lot about you know the internal structure of the Conservatives or the Labour Party, but you should not take that information with you the moment you're going to judge an argument or just debate. And also you're not from a specific country. So you're not necessarily from the UK. You're not necessarily from you know a, a country. It's just like a non-specific country. Also, you are willing to be persuaded. Even if you don't like certain kinds of arguments, or even if you feel like they might not be the strongest one, if they are brought to you and they are proven, then you are going to be willing to be persuaded by them. And the same counts for things such as moral arguments and that kind of stuff. Because the average intelligent voter would be persuaded by moral reasons why we should or should not think, and so should you as a judge. It's also important to note that you should be non-interventionist. So at the moment, again, that you might know a lot about politics and someone makes an argument and you're like, they say this, but I don't think this is true for all these, these reasons. That's not how you should judge the debate. You should judge the debate how it happens. Now, of course, that doesn't mean you can have no opinions because you can still be critical. What you can do is say, well, you know, there are certain gaps in argumentations or it doesn't deal with examples that the average informed voter would know, or you could say that there are, um, you know, it doesn't deal with the cases from other teams as well. And therefore it's unclear how this argument would stand or how to credit it to its full extent. But the case here is, the moment you're going to intervene yourself into the debate, you should do so equally to all arguments. So at the moment, there might be a gap in one argument. It might also be helpful to point out other gaps in other arguments because you need to compare arguments, not just see this argument as strong or weak in isolation, which is something we'll get to later. Lastly, you should be able to understand complex concepts or arguments to the extent they are logically explained in the debate. So when someone just has a one-liner off, which says, ah, we can also always just dollarize and therefore we can just solve inflation. And then you have no idea how dollarization would stop inflation. Then, you know, you cannot just, you know, make that part of that argument because you do not know what this means or how this works or how this looks like, how it's like. Okay, holistic adjudication. So the previous slide was basically how should you judge arguments? But that's not the only thing that you do. You should also compare arguments. So arguments are not necessarily good or bad, but they are better or worse than other arguments. It is very possible for a bad argument to still take first because the other arguments were just worse and the other way around, that there was just a really good room where there were really good arguments, but just one argument edges out the other arguments. What's important is that you're going to think about the strength of arguments. So you do not count arguments. You're not going to say, oh, I think they won because they had three arguments and it was more than the one argument they ran. It is also not important to look at style um, or like how sophisticated the argument is or how original it is. Um, style can influence the way you should debate in the sense that it might be easier to follow. Illustrations might be a bit more gripping and therefore the impact becomes better understandable. All of the stuff. But you don't say, ah, I like the style more, and therefore I'm going to credit the argument more. Again, this is important, which links back to arguments being better and worse. You need to be comparative. So no such thing as having an automatic fourth. So if OG doesn't bring a model in a policy motion, that doesn't mean that they take a fourth. At the moment that they don't do any PY or any engagement, uh, whereas we should punish them, it doesn't mean that they automatically get a fourth. Um, it might mean that their speaker points get deducted or like in close comparison, you flip against them. Also, what you need to do is you need to look at engagement and you need to basically try to see how main clashes and responsive material interact. And it's important to note that sometimes responsive material might be implicit and not explicit. So sometimes something might react to a specific idea, but it might not be labeled as rebuttal or they might deal with the more grand concept, for example, the concept of how narrative influences people. And then at the moment, people have arguments about narratives influencing people that you should see that, you know, the engagement on the larger concept 
should naturally flow towards these arguments that would, are within the same breath or are within the same clash or are you know similar to the, the larger idea. Let's just now get into some specific comparisons that you're going to do um, during deliberation. So for benches, so this is going to be the prop side or upside, what you always need to discuss is just what does closing add, uh, which you always then need to compare it to an opening pot. But also you need to discuss if there's going to be meaningfully better additions or just having relatively minimal additions. But you also need to see if they explain well enough or it is clear from their speech that the contribution is better. So it's not necessarily that if you don't weigh as closing government against your opening government, you lose under them because there is no such thing as taking it automatically under another team when it comes to like weighing. But you can say it can significantly increase the likelihood of it. Um, that's important to note. Also, we have diagonals, which are going to be, for example, your opening government versus your closing opposition, and also your opening opposition versus your closing government. So there are some things that you can consider here. So you can just say the quality of engagement by bottom half, which is going to be the closing half, how they engage with the arguments from the outside, uh, seeing as you know you don't really have the time to respond or possibility to respond in opening half. Um, you can also just check the robustness. So you can say that even if closing opposition might not have you know had any rebuttal from opening government, if the argument itself is not robust and from opening government there is robust argumentation that isn't you know destroyed by closing opposition, then you still should credit opening government. There are also some ways that you know you have, may have some implicit responses where maybe there are some framing of how the government would look like, for example, uh, from opening government, which is something that opening opposition needs to deal with for their case to stand. Um, and in that way, closing opposition would have kind of a burden to engage this material because they have the capacity to respond to this material, which opening government doesn't really. Um, and also, you need to basically has you have to you know reasonably apply existing contributions. So you need to think about what's already been stated. You need to think about if the rebuttal is given, if it's derivative, should I still credit this? Um, if, you know, how should I weigh this against your opening half? And say like, if this is fair enough to credit this as a new material that could also then beat the opening, uh, the, the opening diagonal team. Uh, lastly, this is very important, PY willingness. Um, according to the manual, in close comparisons, you can just flip on PYs. Um, and you can also lower speaker scores. I'll definitely do the, uh, the last one, but in close comparisons, it is very fair to say that, oh, opening government took two PYs from closing, but closing offered, like, like they did not take any PYs at all, or they, uh, closing never offered a PY at all to opening. Um, so therefore it is just unfair um, in close comparisons uh, because they might have had good rebuttal or they might have been able to engage preemptively on the material that they're going to bring. So to take into account PY, willing, uh, PY willingness. Now, rule violations. So what you need to do at the moment someone has a rule violation is you need to remove the edges of the violation. So let's take the context of a closing speaker. If the whip adds new material that is not allowed, so it's like a new arguments, all that kind of stuff, then you cannot credit that and you cannot basically need to remove the advantage of just crediting it. You do not penalize this further than the fact that they might miss stuff. So you don't say, oh, they brought new material, so I'm going to deduct two points. But at the moment, they bring new material, and then it is necessary for them to win. Then their speech might have gaps of logic, or their teams, um, or the speeches might not have enough responsiveness, all of this stuff, because you cannot credit either the new material or the material that was derivative and was already an opening. So therefore you would already punish them by the fact that their arguments are not solid or have gaps in them. Again, PY and willingness can be considered heavily, uh, specifically in ghost comparisons, but also in uh, you know speaker points. Uh, nothing and constricted material is just basically dismissed. So if opening you know government makes argument about states having a lot of power, and then in the DPM, they make arguments about why a state has little power, then you should just basically dismiss that material from the second speaker of opening government um, because it's just contradictory um, and you cannot both be true. It can be true that states exist that are powerful and not powerful at the same time. Um, yeah, and also lastly, of course, at the moment someone scrolls, just gives an definition, gives an unfair model, then you can penalize that team for it as well. Now let's get into deliberation and OS. So, Again, we're going to have a tight schedule. So it's going to be important that you're going to finish your deliberation within 15 minutes. 
And within those 50 minutes, you need to do also submit your palette. So this includes speak. So you should take the time for it. So you should aim, for example, to already be done with all the clashes at like 12 to 13 minutes. Then you have like one to two minutes to just discuss the speaks and also fill in the ballots. Also, you have 50 minutes for OAs. So the chair normally gives this away and gives an explanation of the call. Uh, however, at the moment that they are rolled, so that means that they are outvoted by the panelists, then the chair can choose to not give the OA on the specific clash or in general, and then just make one of the panelists give the OA. Um, it's important that the chair leads the discussion and we are on a tight schedule. So it might be that it is impossible for you to come to a unanimous decision, whereas unanimous decisions are, are, are nice. They're not necessarily the thing that you need to have at the end of a deliberation, because sometimes debate might be incredibly close and splits are just justified. So if you are a chair and you feel like you're unable to convince anyone or you're unable to like come to unanimous decision, think it is very close, then call a vote. And um, if there's going to be, for example, two people voting opening government first, and there are two people voting closing in first, then the, t uh, the the pair that has the chair in it has extra power. So if the chair votes for opening government, then opening government takes the first uh, because we need a tiebreaker. Yeah, this is also important. Um, at the moment, you're going to fill in the ballots. There should be no low points wins. So at the moment, you're going to give speaks to people. It always, always should be that the speaker, like the team that came first, has higher speaker points than the team that came like second, third, or fourth. Um, again, we have a full skill. So use it also fully. So if there are really strong arguments, consider is this just an 80 or is this an 83 or is this an 85, all the stuff. But also if there is just a very bad speech in which things aren't proven, things are just not comparative, there's just not clear how or what they're trying to say. Um, at that point, you can also just go lower, go like 70s, go like 60s, all of the stuff. Uh, read the scale and then just assess if you think it applies to the speech. And lastly, judge feedback. So it is important for us to understand the quality of the judges because then we can create a meritocratic break. So what you should do is you should score judges out of 10. It is very important to also specifically give comments. So at the moment that we know that, for example, a judge has very good like panel management, but their O8 might be a bit messy, then that could be very understanding for us how we might want to allocate them in out rounds or where you know we would maybe need to place other panelists to kind of like you know help each other and give you know give each other each other strengths. So uh, please just you know give things that are good for them and that things that they might need to improve on. So tracking, holistic justification, is there a way good, are they good at time management, all of this. Uh, and again, there's going to be a judge feedback skill is going to be in the Discord a server is going to have a link to it. Also use that skill where you're going to grade so that we all use the same kind of skill because now we know that the six for each individual is the same six and not just like, oh, I just fight with this person and therefore I kind of give an eight, but then looking at the skill should actually be a seven. So that's it. Um, I hope everything is clear. Uh, if you have any questions, you can either come to us during the tournament or you can put questions in the comments below. And then I see you in Bristol. Cheers.